great. I know you talked after the game the other day, and you know, there's a lot of optimism despite the disappointment afterwards. But as, as you guys have kind of looked back at that game, is that reinforced as you watch those things and say, hey, we are a pretty good football team? Yes, sir, absolutely. We, uh, I mean, I moved on pretty quick. Sunday I was watching them, and then after that I forgot about the game. We, we were kind of one guy away so many times from, from big plays and from, uh, from doing a lot of good things on the offensive side. So it, was, it, well, it did reaffirm that there was a lot of positives to take away from the game, but it also reaffirmed that we have a lot to work on. And we have to, it, rather than, I think there's a lot of guys that were trying to do more than their job, and um, we don't need to do that. If everybody does their job, then it's, it's going to work out well. So. Hi, Brady. Obviously, you're a leader on this football team. How do you avoid a, an emotional hangover with Minnesota coming here th this weekend? Uh, I one thing I try to do, and I mean I try to do this every day, but I come out with so much energy, and I try to get the guys around me fired up every day for practice, like it's the first day of fall camp, or like it's the first game, or like if we were playing A and M. I want to have the same exact energy on a Tuesday practice, and the same intensity, and the same focus. And this Tuesday was much better than last Tuesday, so hopefully that's a reflection of what's gonna what's to come this weekend. Um, so I think one of the biggest things for me is energy, focus, and bringing, because we have so many young guys, right? So bringing those young guys together to understand the importance of a Tuesday practice and on a Monday, a Tuesday, the importance of every single day coming together. Brady, you probably spoke for a lot of guys on the offense <coughs> after the A&M game, just saying how uh, the disappointment you guys were feeling, just not being able to put points on the board, especially with how hard the defense was playing, keeping you guys in the game. Just what does that do for you guys uh, motivation-wise looking ahead to Minnesota? Just you guys as an offense really wanting to go out there and just match what this defense has been able to do and, and go out and, and score a lot of points? Uh, it's very motivating because we don't want to ever put our defense in a situation like that again. So as I said, this Tuesday was much better than last Tuesday. So you could see the intensity rise and the focus and the level of play from our guys because we want to be able to match the defense. And if we can match the defense, hell, I mean, we marry those two up, and it can be it can be dangerous. So, because we know we know what we're capable of on offense, um, we just need to put the pieces together to to do what we're capable of. Because because uh, it's kind of like coach hates that word potential. Our potential is so high, but if you can't reach it, then why does that matter? So we need to find a way to reach our potential and strive for, to be great all the time. Pat, the passing game obviously struggled a little bit here out of the gates. Was that surprising to you guys, or has that been something you've been fighting maybe all during camp? Just I'm wondering where your confidence level was coming out of camp, and now that you've struggled out of the gates, has that been surprising? Uh, it has surprised me. We, I mean, I think our passing game, game looked awesome in camp, and it's looked good in practice, too. Um, there's just been miscues here and there that haven't lined up, so we've had a great pass game um, so far, actually, in games. But uh, I still have all the confidence in the world and Brendan and what he can do. I have confidence in the O-line. I have confidence in myself and the tight ends to protect Brendan when he's back in the pocket. So I think that's something that will come along. But it's also something that we want to be able to rely on our run game because, I mean, last year it was so good. This year it should be the same way. Um, we want to be able to control the game with the run. So it might seem like our pass offense is struggling when in reality it's because we can rely so heavily on the on the run game as well, um, which I think is important for a young quarterback. So, Ray, kind of along those same lines, I mean, what, what adjustments have to happen for you guys maybe to hit on a few bigger plays in the passing game? Um, I think the biggest thing would be holding up in protection because uh, – you can't, I mean, with a young quarterback especially, I know I've said that a couple times, but you can't have guys in his face right away, and he can't be, he needs to be able to look downfield. He can't be looking down at the O-line, making sure they're blocking their dudes. He needs to be able to feel safe. He needs to feel protected by the people up front so he can keep his eyes down there and he can make throws. And receivers can make plays and tight ends can make plays and backs can make plays. Uh, he has to be able to be looking down there instead of looking at the people that are in his face. So um, I think the biggest area we need to improve is our protection so that we give Brandon the capability to make those throws. So w one thing with this team over the years uh, is physicality has been kind of an issue. I don't see that right now. And I think that was one of the biggest things this last week. You guys proved yourselves in, on, on that regard, not only defensively, but offensively. I mean, do you feel like 
that's improved in the time you've been here and you know, maybe over the past year? Absolutely. I think um, one big aspect that has changed is our, our culture here. So, like, I mean, A&M, technically, matchup-wise, if you look at the athletes across the board, we shouldn't have matched up with their defense, right? But, and like, I shouldn't have matched up with their defensive ends, and our O-line probably shouldn't have matched up with their D-line, but we're so physically, we're mean, we want to get after people, we want to put them on their backs, that um, that culture that we've instilled in the off-season is now carrying over into the season. I think we can see that. And I think we need to do, we can do a better job than we're doing right now of it also, but you can see the results of that culture flip um, and how people aren't coming out timid, like, oh my gosh, this is number five A and M. We came off the, out, out the gates running. So we were excited to have a big opponent like that. But uh, yeah, that, that, it's a culture change for sure. I think that's the biggest thing. Have you, um, what you were just talking about with blocking in, in the pocket, at the same time, do you have to be wary that Brendan might take off and then pull off to go block downfield? Uh, that's not really a concern. Um, you can kind of feel when you're pass blocking. If your person starts to try to move a certain way, you can feel and you need to start working with them, whether you need to work out down for a check down, whether you should go downfield and start running. You can feel what's going on back there. Um, that's not, yeah, that's not really a huge concern because uh, I'm, I'm confident that he'll step up and make throws when he needs to and when he has the room to do so. We are talking about that culture change on offense. Have you seen a culture change on the defense? I mean, for two and a half, three quarters, I mean, A&M really couldn't do anything against them um, the other day. So talk about what you see out of the defense. Absolutely. The, uh, I think one of the big things we've kind of been missing since I've ever been here is uh, some older leadership, and that's on either side of the ball. So now with Nate back there and Carson and T. Lang and Mackay, like there's people on every level that are leading their uh, position groups and the defense as a whole. So uh, leadership makes a big difference when your players are holding each other accountable and they're pushing each other to be great rather than just having a bunch of young guys that are listening to their coaches yell at them. But they have a, a reason to want to be great because their teammates, they know those older guys are counting on them and the older guys know the younger guys are counting on them to look up to, if that makes sense. Um, so I think leadership's a big change and the defense absolutely has that, so. Did they play me as well? Oh, absolutely. Did you watch them on Saturday? Uh, we'll flip over to the Zoom here. Troy, any questions? I'm not seeing any at this moment. If anybody's got anything, please uh, raise your hand or let us know. Doesn't look like we do. All right, we'll call it. Thanks, Brady. Appreciate the time. All righty, appreciate it.